In this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at five common mistakes that people make whilst they're treating lordosis. Now, if you want to go about correcting lordosis, then just click the link below this uh, video and you'll go straight through to my How to Correct Lordosis 12-week program, which includes information like this, workshops, tutorials, and workouts to help you correct lordosis. So let's now go straight into the five mistakes. Number one is they don't use everyday activity to correct lordosis. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about a day, it's 24 hours. Let's just say we sleep for eight of them. That leaves 16 hours. Now, we may do exercise for just one of them. So we've then got 15 spare hours. Now, if we're in poor posture for 15 hours, it's going to override all the good work we've done in that hour's exercise. So if we can do good quality uh, exercise for one hour and then start to use that 15 hours more effectively by putting the body into the position that we need it to be in, the brain is going to learn that much quicker. Because if we think about poor posture, it's a learned process or muscle tightness that's involved in um, poor posture. It's a learned process. Happens very small little pieces over a long period of time and then eventually we're in a poor posture, a lordotic, a kyphotic posture, whatever it may be. So to get out of that, we need to retrain how the brain communicates with its muscles and we need to get them out of that. And that's what it's all about. It's all about that repetition. So we don't just repeat for an hour, we repeat for you know, a good quality hour and then also throughout the day. So the brain relearns the posture that it needs to go into. Stage two is they don't actively reposition their pelvis when stretching. Now what that means is you've probably seen me do it and other people do it. They'll come down onto one knee and then we'll go into this stretch to stretch through uh, the hip flexors. But what can happen in this stretch is the pelvis can just dump straight down and you go into the stretch with a tilted pelvis and an arched spine. Now that's not the most effective position to be in for that stretch. So what we need to be able to do is not just go into this position and just dump ourselves into the stretch where the spine bends and the pelvis drops, what we need to do is go into this stretch and actively position the pelvis. So actively position the spine. Okay, so there, it's a much flatter spine. What I'm also doing is I'm engaging my glute, engaging my abdominals to then lock that in position. So I'm actively positioning my pelvis and spine. What I can then do is move into the stretch without losing this position and without losing this position. If I still need a stretch, I can just lift an arm up and then I will start to get my stretch through the psoas, through the iliacus that I, that I need to. So that is actively positioning the pelvis. Again, it's much better quality when we do it this way because we're not just dumping into the position, we're putting it in the position and then we're going through the stretch. Mistake three is they don't prepare the muscles for exercise. So some people can just go straight into exercise, straight into a bridging exercise or a, uh, a kneeling exercise to, to work out and correct their lordosis. But what they're not potentially doing is foam rolling. And again, with the 12-week program, if you have a foam roller, there's a workshop in there for that. So I teach you how to use a foam roller, what foam rollers are more useful than others, so on and so forth. So we foam roll. We foam roll the, the tighter muscles. What that then allows us to do is then go into the stretches that I've just mentioned, or that stretch that I've just mentioned, and others, to then start repositioning the pelvis. Because what the foam roller's done is they've made the muscle more pliable, more stretchy, so it's able to bend and move and get into the position that we want. With the stretching, it then lengthens that. That starts training the brain to recognize that the body has, or the, that muscle has, extra length. Then it's ready for exercise because what we can then do is we can start activating glutes much more effectively. So we need to start preparing the muscles in a way to be able to do that. So what muscles might we prepare? We might prepare glute medius, glute minimus, or certainly the anterior portions of it, and rectus femoris, TFL, all in that area, all at the front of the, the, the pelvis. Loosening these muscles along with rec fem, and obviously so as an iliacus, releasing these muscles, oh, and the adductors as well, releasing these muscles is gonna help us actively engage the glutes at the back when we do the exercise. 
So we're preparing the body in stages all the way through. So everything that's in the program is there for a reason. Everything that you do early is helping you later on in the program. So it's not just a throw you into a workout and off you go. There are workshops, there are tutorials to help learn all of this. You can learn all of that, then go into the workouts and you know what you need to be doing in the workouts to correct your posture as best as possible. Mistake number four is they don't actively engage muscles during exercise. So I've just talked about how you prepare a muscle. Roll, stretch, then we need to start moving and activating and using it. What we need to do here is be active with that. So we need to consciously activate the glutes, for example. So we could do that using a bridge. So if we come into a bridge, what we need to be doing is lifting the hips here and actively engaging the glutes, not just letting the hamstrings take on all the work. So we're actively engaging here. Again, we're holding, making sure the muscles are working, keeping the, again, keeping the hamstrings as relaxed as we can, and then we would come down. So again, it's not just a case of going into the position, doing the hold or the movement, and then expecting it to be right. We're actively engaging the right muscles that we need. This can also be done in the kneeling position, squeezing the heels together. Relax the hamstrings a little bit more because we're upright. And then again, we're actively engaging these muscles like I talked about with positioning of the pelvis. We're engaging the glutes, we're engaging the abdominals to hold the pelvis and the spine in place. Because it's these cues that are gonna get the brain to remember the position to be in. Again, so many people just do a bunch of stretches expecting it to work. We need to be more conscious than that. It needs to be more effective than that. We need to be able to loosen those muscles off mechanically, rolling, stretching. Then we need to activate and move them using the exercises that we're doing. And we need to do that in a way which is conscious. Mistake number five is people don't breathe well whilst they're exercising. So we've built through these five mistakes in stages. And what we've now got, we're consciously engaging muscles, so we're thinking about that. We're consciously getting into the right position, so we're thinking about that. Now we've got to think about breathing as well. So when we come into a hold, so if I just go down on my knees for the, for the benefits of uh, demonstration, this is essentially a bridge position. So we come into this position, I actively engage, so I get my pelvis in position, I sort my spine out, I've got this. Now I'm holding. What I generally do with my breathing is hold it, because I'm holding. So everything just kind of gets all tense. But what we need to be able to do within that is breathe. And this comes down to the core skills, which is breathing and bracing, or two of those five core skills, which is breathing and bracing. So I need to be able to breathe and brace. So I need to be able to breathe in. And what you'll also notice from that is I'm not breathing from my chest. I'm breathing from down here. So although it's tight, I've still got some movement there to use my diaphragm, to breathe from the diaphragm, to be able to get some oxygen in and out, which is gonna help with the endurance of the muscle. It's gonna help with the brain not going into its stress response and tightening up muscles. So all the way through, it's a very effective way of training to correct posture. And as I mentioned before, if you want to start overcoming these mistakes and correcting them, go down below, click the link under the video, and you'll go through to the 12-week program, just enroll, get started. All the workshops, all the tutorials, and all the workouts are there ready for you. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from Christopher Hall Training. I'll speak to you in the next tutorial.